All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Jesus said in John 8.32, you shall know the truth. And there's one thing about the truth, it will make you free. And the first thing you need free is your mind. All right, all right, shalom, 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 shalom. Greetings to each and every last one of you, sweet, precious, and strong, and victorious and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. I hope that each and every last one of you are doing well. Um, I've had a busy day, kind of, I guess you could say I did, with some way, somehow, somewhat, um, don't know. But I tell you what, we are, we are um, having a, wait a minute, looks like your brother Juan is online here for a second. We're working with something in the tabernacle here for a second. I'll be back here in just a second. Um, I'll be back here in just a second. We're glad to have each and every last one of you here tonight listening to us on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, this is Pastor Dow. If you'd like to contact us, our phone number is area code 615-688-3024. That is, again, 615-688-3024. If you'd like to correspond with us, or if you'd like to support this particular ministry uh, with your gifts, your offerings, or letter of support, you can send it to Pastor Charles Dowell. That is Pastor Charles Dowell. And the last name is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. -L. That is Pastor Charles Dowell. You can send your letter to 632 Highway. 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. PMB number one. Lafayette, Tennessee. Lafayette is spelled L A F A Y E T T E three seven zero eight three. Of course, everybody already knows. Glory to the King. The rest of the story. All right, um, we're here, um, and I know you know I had quite a few phone calls today. Y'all have to understand that I can't be dropping what I'm doing and rushing to the telephone every time it rings or because someone leaves a message. I am a very very busy man. Did y'all hear what I said? I'll say it again. I am a very, very, very busy man. And I can't be stopping what I'm doing just because the phone rings to accommodate every single phone call. That's the reason why I don't get back with every phone call because the phone here straightway is constantly ringing off of the hook. If you understand what I mean. Um, and I know that many of you don't understand that. I know that you don't understand that because many of you, your life is not as busy as mine or the saints here straightway. But I just simply cannot, and I say it again, I simply cannot, and I say it again, I simply cannot just answer every single call. Do you understand? All right. Lord to the King. Um, with that all said and stuff, uh, let me see. I hope that y'all enjoyed the message yesterday. Um, but I can tell one thing, just by the little response that I've been dealing with today in some areas and stuff, that a lot of you Israelites exercise selective hearing. In other words, many of you heard everything that I didn't say. And you expect for me to answer what I didn't say. And I think the problem is, and you know, they, 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 you know, they asked the, the Messiah said to the people all the time, why does doubts arise in your heart? Now, believe me, don't get me wrong. I understand that I say a lot of things that you are not accustomed to hearing and you're not used to actually hearing. Um, and, and, um, and you never heard it quite put that way, if I can say that. But, I mean, I'll give you an example. Over in Luke 5, 21, the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason saying, who is this which speaketh blasphemes? Who can forgive sins but 
Yah alone. Did y'all hear what I said? Who can build sins of alone? So, you know, they, they're already calling Jesus a blasphemer simply because he is forgiving people of their sins. All right? And then Jesus replied and said, but when Jesus perceived, notice he said it, when he perceived their thoughts. Did y'all hear what, it, what I just got finished reading? It says, when he perceived their thoughts, he answered and said unto them, here's the question, look, look what he said, look what he said to these people who had already formulated stuff in their mind. He says, why reason ye in your hearts? You see, that's the real question of the day. Because yesterday, everybody heard everything that I didn't say. I mean, and it just literally jacked people up. Nevertheless, every single word I said was the truth, whether you like it or not, is totally irrelevant. You may not like it. You may not love it. Uh, you may despise what I said, but your problem is not with me. Your problem is with the Most High Yah, not with me whatsoever at all. I agree with the book 100%. I don't, I don't go cherry picking the scriptures. I don't selectively deduct and selectively pick what I'm going to receive or what I'm going to reject. The Bible says that I believe it. What about you? Hallelujah. Now, yesterday's message was totally on envy and jealousy, which you know is an epidemic in Israel. We have an epidemic of envy and jealousy in Israel. You know that's the truth. Isn't that the truth? We have serious problems. Um, our minds are so corrupted today. And I keep telling us this. I tell us this until I'm green in the face. I like to say blue because blue is my favorite color. But I keep saying this until I'm green in the face. Did you hear what I said? Until I'm green in the face, I say these things. That our minds are so corrupted that the only thing we think about in this society is sex. That's all we think about. Sex, 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 sex. And everything is equated to sex. Everything is equated to sex. What, you know, when you're talking about that one part that people have trouble with yesterday, does anybody know anything about the law of inheritance? Anybody? No, 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 you don't because we've been Hellenized. We've been raised Greeks. We've been raised American, Americanized. That's what I had a faithful brother tell me today. We have been Americanized. Um, and, and nobody understands the law of inheritance to keep us from raising a bunch of bastards. Um, now, if you, if you have sensitive ears and you can't understand what I'm saying, and, and if your ears are a little bit too clean to hear what I'm saying, especially when I'm using biblical words, uh, then you probably do good to go back to TBN and listen to Benny Hinn and Frederick Price and, and Cleflo Dollar and all them who are going to tickle your ears after them. But, you know, one thing about it yesterday, it proved to me that the integrity of the people's hearts, the integrity of the hearts of the people, is really not where it should be at. It really truly is. We don't know what we think we know. And it's a bad, 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 bad attest to our character. Oh, man, now this screen is messing up. Now my chat room is messing up. Man, I tell you what, if it ain't one thing, it is another. If it ain't one thing, it is another. Wow. Just utterly amazing. All right. Let me get back in this chat room here. Hallelujah. Okay. But I tell you what, rather than hearing what's already in your heart, how about just hearing what's said and then see if it's actual and factual. Hallelujah. Uh, because we prove over and over and over again when the Apostle Paul says, I have many things that I like to say unto you, but I can't say it unto you. And the reason why I can't say it to you, seeing that you are dull of hearing. You ever heard that before? Dull of hearing. Now, what makes you dull of hearing? We need to ask ourselves that question. What causes you to be dull of hearing? And I'm going to tell you one thing. If you choked yesterday on what I said, you're going to have belly aching problems, regurgitating problems. You're going to have some serious problems with the things I have not yet said, which is going to be Bible, actual, factual, and truthful. We say we love the truth, don't we? Oh, yeah. Then you know what the amazing thing about it is? We can't hear the truth when it's spoken to us because we have formed an opinion of what we believe truth is of our own self. We have defined truth on our own terms for our own self. And then we wonder why people can't hear us when we're talking to them about the Sabbath day. 
We wonder why people can't hear us when we're talking about the Hebrew heritage uh, of being an Israelite. Man, we got some we got some serious problems, don't we, Israel? But anyway, other than that, we had a wonderful Sabbath. Sure did. Wonderful Sabbath, wonderful time. That's what we did. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. We had a wonderful Sabbath. We had a wonderful time. All right. Let me see that. We got quite a few callers lined up in the queue here tonight. Uh, glory to the king. Brother Steve, are, are you still at the same number that I can get you, or do I have to Skype you? I'll tell my brother Steve up in Canada. I miss you and Sister Wendell. Ooh, I miss y'all company. It sure is nice when you go places and you can tell the people that you actually miss them and their company. Isn't that true? Hallelujah. All right. I've had people also call and get on me because I don't give out the, the new listeners that come in and they're quite upset because we don't do enough station breaks to actually give out the information. So I'll tell you what, I'll do a radio break here for the ministry. And then what I would do is I would actually come back in here and start taking your phone calls at area code 310-982-4226. Country code 1, 310-982-4226. Look forward to seeing and hearing from you, you, and you. Be back here in just a moment. We're glad to have each and every last one of you here tonight listening to us on Blog Talk Radio. Uh, this is Pastor Bow. If you'd like to contact us, our phone number is area code 615-688-3025. That is, again, 615-688-0025. If you'd like to correspond with us or if you'd like to support this particular ministry uh, with your gifts, your offerings, or letter of support, you can send it to Pastor Charles Dowell. That is Pastor Charles Dowell, and the last name is spelled D-O-W-E-L-L. -L. That is Pastor Charles Dowell. You see your letter to 632 Highway 52 Bypass West. That's 632 Highway 52 Can you hear me? Uh, we also have a Bible I mean, is it interfering with the signal up there? But we also speak to you about what about up there? To obey the covenant of the Most High. Uh, we hope to hear from you, you and you. That is our prayer. The King is coming. All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. We're back now. You know, brothers and sisters, I, you know, I, I want to go ahead and, and try to clear the air and help out a lot of our minds and stuff because, you know, man, I tell you what. Whew, 
I made a scripture quote yesterday, and I said in Romans, I was actually quoting for Romans, the second chapter. And I said, but when the Gentiles, which have not the law, they don't have no Torah, they're totally lawless, they do whatever they want, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law, are law unto themselves. And that's the part I didn't put in. What I was getting to is the other part that was talking about that if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not the uncircumcision be circumcision. And the truth is, yes, their uncircumcision will be circumcision. Glory to the king. All right. So with that said, we'll go to Brother Junior 631. Hey, Brother Junior, when I get you on this line, brother, I need you to talk up a little bit louder, okay? Talk up just a little bit louder. Brother Junior, 631, it's Pastor Dow. You know, straight with you, radio broadcast. How can I help you, my brother? Hey, Pastor. I got you, Brother Junior. You're coming in loud and clear. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. That was a good message. Yeah, Shalom. Um, that was a good message yesterday. I felt it yesterday. I felt it yesterday, man. I felt it. it was, I need that feeling, too. It was a good feeling. It was feeling, you know, you, you, you get, you feel that mess like that. You get pain. You feel um, pain in your stomach, abdomen, your neck and all that. I think that's death, right? That's, that's death, right? Yeah, man. It's, um, um. What it is, is that there's something alive in you, but the law, when it comes to you, that which you thought was alive, you're dead to, and it's actually bringing forth life. That's what's happening. But, you know, when you're talking about envy and jealousy, brother, you you hitting everybody. Everybody. Ain't nobody exempt from that, brother. There's some form of ill will, some form of resentment, some form of hatred, some form of despising, some form of somebody wishing that they had what somebody else had or wish, you know, wish that covenant people looks, that covenant people, um, who knows, man, who knows? I mean, but, it, man, it, it runs rampant um, in Israel. Yes, sir, yes, sir. But I still evil, though. I'm an Hebrew. Oh, yeah, you're a Hebrew, bro, no doubt about it. You still got your afro? Now I cut it down, but I'm growing it back, though. Yeah, wintertime coming, man. I think I'm going to grow me one real big. Pass it down. Get some locks, too. Get some dreadlocks. <laughs> Get some locks. <laughs> Junior want me to grow some locks, Saints. What do y'all think about that? Junior want me to grow some locks. If I do that, man, brother. Uh, bro brother. Um, um, man, his name slipped my mind. He's going to be upset because a lot of these brothers come to the ministry, had locks, and cut them off. Yeah, remember, remember back in back in town in Torah, like like people were wearing locks back in days. Sure, but sure. It's in Torah. It's in Torah. You're true. You're right, brother. Uh, you're right. Uh, I say you're right, but I ain't gonna grow no locks, brother. I'm gonna keep my hair short. All right, and the reason why I keep it short, brother, because for tactical reasons. Because the last thing you want to do is have long hair, and you have to be in a physical confrontation with somebody. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, so I think tactical. I, 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 I agree with you, you know what I'm saying? I agree with you. I agree with your tactical perspective. I agree with that. But I, I'm going to get dressed, and I'm going to be long. You know what I mean? I'm going to be all oh, my legs. I'm going to be certain length, you know what I mean? Yep. So, if my wife's hair is long, I ain't going to grow that long, you know what I'm saying? My hair is long, my wife's long. Hey, long, and I'm going to I'm going to say, certain point, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And, uh, and, um, that's a beautiful thing. You got more than one word. That's a beautiful thing, Kingdom. What? Well, I mean, that's just clearly what the prophecies say, brother. Um, again, I, you, you're talking about a people who have been Hellenized, uh, Americanized, right. Greekanized. And, you know, the Greeks, they had a wife and a boyfriend. And, um, you know, I mean, they, these are just some immoral people, but, and this is the type of culture that we're living in now. I mean, it, it's, it's a shame, brother, when we look at homosexuality and we don't even turn up a nose at it no more. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. I understand, I understand what you're saying, but I could, I'm, like, like, right now, suppose, suppose, you're married, right? Like, I could, I could, I, like, you can't handle, like, one wife right now. Suppose I get an example, like, I had one wife, I had another one, you know what I'm saying? It's about I'm getting, I'm trying to get, like, I'll probably get, like, two. <laughs> if I get an example, I get an example. 
Probably. Well, the idea of Junior is, is that, you know, the, uh, that's why I was talking about the law of inheritance. Um, it, it's because, um, you know, look at our society today. You you got um, um, a, a bunch of single women, brother. Uh, do you? Let me give you a statistic here, okay? Do you know for every 150 women, there are 50 men? Did you know that? Mm. It's somewhere along those lines. It's in between 100 and 100. For every 100 and 150 women, there are 50 men for every 150 women. Woo, boy, you talking about outnumbering, huh? That's crazy. But he will, well, I thought his like woman was I'm saying, saying, so I agree with you. I'm saying, I agree with you. But I have, like, I have one wife right now, supposedly, I need an example. Supposedly, now I'll probably have another one. That's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I hear you. Yes, sir. But, you know, that, you know, like I said yesterday, you know, I, I spoke on that because I'm repeating exactly what happened with our patriarchs, what was in the, in the Torah and the Tanakh, what's written in the scriptures. It may not be popular, people may not want to hear it, but it's just the truth. I mean, the bottom line is Abraham, who is the father of our faith, had more than one wife. Jacob, who actually had, he had hey, he's, he's the progenitor of the 12 tribes. He had more than one wife. Moshe, the lawgiver, the custodian of the law, had more than one wife. Dawid, David, a man created after y'all's own heart, had more than one wife. So, you know, people can't get around it. They may not like it. I ain't asking them like it. I really don't care if they don't like it or not. It's irrelevant to me. I preach and teach. And, I, and I, I give forth the word whether they hear or forbear. But like I said, the thrust of the message yesterday was on envy and jealousy. And I think that's something that we really truly need to understand, brother, because um, if we don't get what these spirits are trying to do in the midst of us, we're in trouble as a people, brother, because we are already killing each other and murdering each other by the tongue. Can't do that. You cannot. I watch your tongue. Your tongue is all the the Bible says the tongue is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And the one thing you can't, and I hate, I'm not getting on our sisters. You know, some sisters practice tempers. They really, truly do. And they are, are being holy. They really, truly do. They're being meek. They're being good daughters of Zion, just like you got some brothers. But the majority of Israel have too many women that are busybodies. They run from house to house, right. tail bearing, and they don't and they don't think they're gonna pay for that stuff. But that's just the truth. Uh -huh. Men, you know, I mean, I hang around men all the time, brother. Men don't get into all that gossip and slander. Now, you got a few of them, brother. That 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 brother, they run their mouth too. Don't get me wrong, they run their mouth too, brother. But it's not an imbalance like it is with the sisters. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Well, if we can all remember one principle, we'll be all right. You want to know what that is? What? Mind your own business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, I do. I mind my business. Mind your own business and stay the hell out of everybody else's because you ain't got no power to change anything. Well, you definitely know I am. Hallelujah. And I know you are. Junior, good talking with you, my brother. Love you too, Junior. Shalom, shalom, shalom. <laughs> if y'all want to know how to stop the devil in assemblies, how to stop the devil from working in communities, how to stop the devil from working in your homes, how to stop the devil from working on your jobs, I'm going to tell you how you stop it. Shut your damn mouth. I know that's a new concept. I know it's a new concept. And stay off that hell of phone. I know it's a new concept. I know it, man. That damn phone sets hell on fire. 
Man, if there, if there was ever a gadget that would go to hell first, it would have to be the telephone. It got to be the telephone. I'm telling you, we are finished. Woo. Man. Let's go to Washington. Brother LJ, 509, 509. LJ, speak up loud, Brother LJ. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straight with you, the radio broadcast. How can I help you? Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, brother. How are you? Good, good, good. I, I, I enjoyed the radio show, the, uh, uh, the service yesterday. I mean, you guys, you guys just having too much fun. You guys were really having too much fun. Having too much fun. Okay. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm glad to be. Uh, had to be a part of it and, and, and hearing all the truth and all of that. And uh, I, I just want to, you know, just call in and let you guys know that we're that we're still up here and we're, we're, we're doing okay. And uh, not too hard of hearing because uh, we're, 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 right now we're looking into getting that RV and getting out the city soon. So. Well, just, just make wise moves, okay, my brother? Make wise moves, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We'll do that. Yeah, I hope to see you guys. Hope to see you guys during God. Um, Lord got the tickets, not sure, you know, if, if it's cool or not, if you want to see my face or not. Yeah, I mean, if you're able to make it down for God's brother, come on down. All right, all right, we can do that. Yeah, I'm going to put out a letter here uh, online that people can download, uh, and they can send that letter in along with their fee for God's brother, and, and, then, um, and then I'll send you a reply back. All right. All right. Good. Good. Well, hey, Shalom. Just checking in. We love you guys. Appreciate everything. Talk to yourself. All right, my brother. Shalom. 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 <clears throat> you know, I'm wondering when we actually going to start actually believing the Bible. I mean, really, truly. Um, when the Bible says there's only going to be a remnant that's going to be saved, Many of you just assume that that's you. You assume that that's you. And some way, somehow, you've done wished yourself into the kingdom. Uh, but let me help you out real quick. You better plant your feet on this earth real quick and start walking out this life if you plan on getting light for the flight to get to the kingdom. Now, I can't say it any other way. I can, just can't dress it up, saints. Uh. Let's go to Sister Nastasha. No, let's go to Brother Desmond. Brother Desmond, 469 in Texas. Brother Desmond, 469 in Texas. How you doing, brother? Pastor Dow, you're on the Straight Retune Radio broadcast. Speak up loud. Can you hear me, Pastor? I can hear you. What you got? Hey, Pastor. Uh, Shalom. I have some good news I, I got to tell you, Pastor. Uh, I caught the baptism of the Holy Spirit yesterday at the Gorham. I told you you was going to get it, didn't I? Yes, sir. Brother, I'm ecstatic yes, and elated and excited for you. I appreciate it. You remember the, uh, on Shabbat when I told you uh, another brother comes to fellowship with us, Brother Q? Yeah. He caught the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well. Hallelujah. I tell you what, hold on one second, okay? Yes, sir. Boy, I tell you what, that's just like music to my ears, brother. We excited for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I thank you, Pastor, and I thank you for that message yesterday because I don't know if that unlocked something, but I sure wouldn't repent for it because I know I, I had to have some jealousy in because you was beating me up the whole time you was preaching. I'm talking about beating me up. <laughs> well, let these sayings, like the word says, sink deep down into your heart. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother, we're glad that you got the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's always a good report to hear that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, my brother, be at peace. Yes, sir. Did you have anything else? 
Now, I just want to tell Brother Julius that I was one of the people that had dreads also, and I felt convicted, so I cut by her. But it's all about conviction. Hallelujah. All right, my brother. Hallelujah. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you. How are you doing? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty all right. That's that pretty. They tried to try me with some uh, sickness in my body, but I really wasn't sick. I think I'm just, you know, developing because uh, I'm seven months going on eight. So I talked to Sister Candace and Sister Latoya, the out director of uh, Brother Charles' wife, and they told me I should be fine just, you know, get some rest. And Sister Candace laid hands on me, and I feel a lot better. So hallelujah. But um, other than that, my, uh, brother, I'm just trying to stay encouraged and, you know, just do, do my due diligence. So that's all. That's pretty much it. All right. God bless you, sister. Bless you, Pastor. Shalom, shalom. Shalom. And you know what, brothers and sisters, let me let me say something to everybody out there, especially you people who are going to be listening to this broadcast. Yeah, I mean, I know that a lot of you go back and download this broadcast. Uh, matter of fact, it's probably like five or six hundred of you to actually go back and download the broadcast. The people who don't make it and the people who listen to it throughout the week. Is it not remarkable and amazing how that you have all these camps, all these different religions come with all these different philosophies and perspectives about things? And every single one of them, Mr. Mark, they tell you that you don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking with tongues as the Spirit of Yah give the utterance. Yet and still, from one end of the United States of America to the other and outside of it, we continually keep getting reports of people receiving a baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, what's the problem? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. The problem is religion. The problem is theology. The problem is ideology. The problem is dogmatic, 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 and I say it again, dogmatic legalism of Scripture uh, to where people don't want to actually fulfill what the prophecy says as well as the fulfillment of the renewed covenant of Barak Hadashah. And so therefore the people have no power and influence over the demonic spirits to cast them out. That's one reason why you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit so you can have power to cast them out. Do you understand? All right. Let's go to Sister Nastasha. Call on number 469 in Texas, 469. This is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straightway Tune Radio broadcast. How may I help you? Hey, good evening, Pastor. How are you doing? Oh, we're doing all right. Blessed are the most high, y'all. Highly favored, all that good stuff. What about you? Oh, I'm blessed. I know I probably just don't sound like it, but I'm just physically, physically exhausted from the weekend at the Borman's. Um, I know you heard the Holy Ghost party in the background that we had, and um, uh, I, uh, just, I, I just can't wait to sit down with you so I can share how it really was this weekend at the Gormans. When I say when men get together, strong Israelite men, it doesn't matter if they're black, white, or whatever, but when these Hebrew Israelite men get together and catch the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and are speaking in tongues or delivering each other in the all one accord. Oh my gosh, the Holy Spirit was in that house. Well, hey, Sister Nastasha, I got a question. All of us up, it shut all of us up. We were in tears, we were on the ground praising the Father because we know how important it is for these Hebrew Israelites like, men to be obedient because the ratio was so uh, off balance with women to men. And, um, we know what the devil is trying to do. We know that we're in the week of Bethel, so we were so appreciative and so grateful and so blessed to be able to all be in the house and hear through the walls of that house uh, with a few and with a Desmond kissing the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it, adds, it actually adds security uh, to the women of Israel. Um, I had never experienced anything like that before. It was just so edifying. Uh, to be there, everybody received words from your um, your teachings, and I also have never been in a scenario. Um, I'm new to the faith, you know, mind you, but it was my first time in a scenario where all the women were able to go around and through the weekend um, admit their thoughts of how they were jealous or how 
Whoa, 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 Hey, let me tell y'all something. Y'all got something good. Because I'm telling you what, in a big assembly like this one up here, you don't want to share that kind of information because you got the devil in a lot of people, boy, and they'll try to take advantage of it and exploit uh, what you call your weakness and stuff and just terrify it of you. I'm telling you, it's just a shame. But it's good that y'all got that kind of fellowship. But you know what? What you're experiencing, Paul, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and casting out devils and all that stuff, uh, Brother Desmond, I'm going to tell you that that happens up here every single week. Every single week we experience that and stuff. Of course, you know, with much experience as that we have and stuff, it's not that it, it, we don't rejoice. It's not that it's old hat. It's just that it happens so much that even when a miracle takes place up here, people don't even get excited no more. They just expect it. They're just like, oh, well, yeah, you know, Jesus doing what he's supposed to do. But if you ain't been around miracles and you've never seen miracles take place and you've never seen people's lives transform, uh, it, it's always a, a brand new experience and you're really an excited and elated. I'm not saying that the saints do not get excited and they are not elated because they really, truly are. Whenever someone receives the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they are happy for them. They truly, truly are. It's just that we expect it. You know, now we have a spirit of expectation whenever someone prays, whenever we pray for someone or we lay hands on someone for them to get healed, we command it. We expect Jesus to do it because um, that's one way to let you know that Jesus is with you. I promise you that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He was definitely with us. We praised and worshiped for probably two, three, four hours. I don't know. We're all just so exhausted from all the praise and worship, but our spirit is high. Um, it's where uh, it's getting better every week. Um, I'm born through trials, tribulations, transitions, but it is teaching me. Yah is trying me, and the devil is trying me. Um, but I'm, I'm just so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for the form of the Alpha Record of the Jesus Saints. I'm just very, very thankful to be uh, able to be tried because I want to know myself. Y'all already know me. I need to know me, you know. So I just want to uh, wrap that up and just say thank you for the sermon yesterday. Thank you uh, for everything you're doing, your obedience once again. Just uh, say hello to the girl. Let her know that I will be sending her update of the different things that have happened. Uh, this past week, so y'all can kind of be uh, informed about what's going on with me. Well, it's good hearing your voice, sister. All right. Well, Shabbat Shalom. I love you, saints, and I love you straightway. All right. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, don't get me wrong. I don't want anybody to get me wrong. We have a, a, a wonderful group of people here at Straightway. And yes, we do, too. They are, I mean, they are, I don't know any other people I'd rather be around in the whole world. Now, there's a lot of attitudes I could deal without. I mean, that's just a fact. I mean, it probably there's a lot of things probably with me that people could do without, too. Um, yet and still, we just long-suffering. I guess we just put up. Um, but, hey, we're Israel, no doubt about it. Let's go to Brother Ron in New Jersey. Call number, um, what is it, 856? 856, Brother Ron in New Jersey, Pastor Dow. Man, what is that? Brother Ron, New Jersey, 856. It's Pastor Dow. Come on with it, brother. What you, what you got? Man, I must be getting old or something. I can't see nothing. <laughs> what you got, Brother Ron? Welcome straight away. Shalom, Israelite scattered abroad and on Shofar Mountain. Um, good, Pastor. I enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed uh, teaching you today about therapy and like uh, Brother Junior said, like the Desmond said, so mm -hmm. like you have you have stated it, then all of us, everybody got hit. I got hit, I was slouched down in the chair by the end of it, but it was beautiful because it just showed me how much more work needs to be done before I can actually be accepted into the kingdom. You know? You know, brother it's beautiful that we can have to I don't I don't think, brother Ron, that there's one saint 
um, that, that does not deal with envy or jealousy to some capacity. What do you think? Well, now, we all deal with it. We all deal with it. If our ancestors dealt with it, if, like you said, if, if David, a man after Yah's own heart, uh, uh, had Saul, who was chosen by Yah, and he had jealousy and envy in his heart, the brothers of Joseph, uh, Sarah, Hagar, you know, all the saints that you went over. And these are people that the Most High loves. And these are people that, you know, loved his law, statutes, and his commandments. Yet they had jealousy and they had envy with inside of them. So it's not as if, you know, us having jealousy and envy inside of us. It, you know, it's not, you, you can't turn and look at your brother and your sister and be like, you got jealousy and envy? Oh, you know what, I gotta get away from you. You know, you can't do that because everybody has it. You know, it's just the fact of who's gonna acknowledge it and actually, actually uh, 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 repent and to have it removed from that, you know. Uh, pastor, like you said, Pastor, there's no one exempt from that teaching. There's no one exempt from many of the teachings that uh, the Father is giving accusation, rejection, everything, Pastor. There's, there's, he's swinging hard. How did the people do with the message yesterday? You said, how did the people do with the message yesterday? Yep. Well, I was, I was at my house yesterday, Pastor. We didn't tell it to yesterday. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I did, uh, I received everything that was, uh, supposed to be received. But, well, not everything, because, you know, we got to watch it two or three times before we can, um, get the full message out and get everything out of it. But that first time around, and the second time I'm going to be watching it, I already know I'm going to get some more out of it. I had to hit the knees after, after it, because... You know, once the Father shows you, he shows you it's best to get on your knees right away while it's still fresh in your mind, you know? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you 100%, brother. Sound like you're on point to me? Go ahead, Pastor. No, go ahead, brother. I'm listening. I got a question. All right, what is it? I'm just trying to... um, I'm trying to understand uh, something out of the wisdom of Solomon in Chapter 1. Um, it says in verse 13, it reads, For Yah made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being, and the generation of the world were healthy, and there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. And the only thing, you know, the main part that caught me was, of course, the beginning where it says, uh, yeah, I made not death. And what, I'm th- what, what comes into my mind is uh, sin and then, uh, death entered, through sin, entered into the world through sin. Um, is, can you give me some clarity on, on why this, he, he, he stated that, uh, yeah, I made not death? Sure. It's about understanding the scripture, brother, and the order of Yah. And the answer is this. When it says that Yah made not death, you have to understand. Yah is all about life and creation, okay? Yeah, we know men die, but what is death? Death is separation from one state to another. There's never going to be a time where you cease to exist. We use the word death in this realm. We use the word death where we at right now because when we are absent from the body is to be present with the Most High Yah. Remember, we are first a spirit. We have a soul and we live in a body, so we use the word death, meaning to meaning that this body is going to die and go back to the dust where it's earth, but there's never going to be a time to where anyone that was created is going to cease to exist. Did I help you out here? Yeah, 100%. That's, that's, that's clarity. So you're either going to be with the king or you're going to be burning in the lake of fire. At the end of the day, but you'll never see death as, as, as the body, as, as the other. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really easy to understand it because, you know, we are a spirit. And and some of our spirits going to go to the kingdom when the breath goes out of our bodies. And some of them, some people's spirit, like the majority of the world, going to go to a living, burning hell. You understand what I mean? Yeah. But this body is going back to the earth, what is called death. That's what the people call death, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, that's hallelujah. That's now, watch this. 
On the contrast, I remember when the Messiah was talking about people, all right? He told the people in his day, it is better for you to enter into life if you didn't have one arm or one leg or one eye, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. Than to go into it with it being offended. So, you know, it's about understanding the wisdom of Yah. And that's the reason why I'm here. That's why it says in Jeremiah 3.15, I'm going to give you a pastor's, according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Exactly, Pastor, and about, about that also, you know, that's, that's what the most high ordained you to do is to feed us with the word, and if you neglect his word or if you alter it or if you change it, you know, that puts you on the chopping block. And, um, you know, I know that there were things that was uh, spoken about that's hard for people to digest, but it's not the fact that it's, you know, it's not the fact that if you spoke the words of yourself, you know, you spoke the words of the most high, and, and they have the king things. Or, uh, or the scriptures or whatever version Bible that they have to read the same thing that you spoke out your mouth. So it doesn't come to, um, you know, the situation of what is spoken. It just comes to what they are willing to accept and what they are not willing to accept. You know, that's really what it boils down to at the end of the day. So continue to see that the word of the Most High and things and like you said, and I mean, with like starting from that scripture study and going into teaching. And, you know, you're, you're bring up things that, you know, is a really touchy subject for people, but it's what, it's what needs to be heard because we need to continue to press forward. We can't get comfortable. We can't get relaxed. We can't, you know, we can't start to slumber. we got to continue to press forward. And the harder that you continue to press forward, then the, it's the rougher it's going to get, you know. We can't let Satan step up their game. Yet we fall back and we slack off and, and just, you know, play it simple uh, after we've seen, you know, our, our, uh, our, our predecessors before. But I continue to preach the word, Pastor, and feed us with the knowledge and understanding of the Most High God. All right, my brother. Good hearing your voice. You're a two, Pastor. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, let's go to Georgia, Brother Frank, 912-912. This is Pastor Dowling on the Straight with You Radio Broadcast. How can I help you, Brother Frank? Hello, Pastor Dowling. How are you doing, sir? I'm all right, sir. How you doing, my brother? I'm doing very well. Hey, I just uh, I, uh, I wanted to, to, to thank you. Um, you said something yesterday, and you kind of referenced it already tonight in your in the, uh, when you return some of the some of the calls, um, you're talking about how a lot of how, how a lot of saints they're going to end up perishing before the day of, of of Yahweh, and I think it's very important. This is just a brother Frank's view on it. It's very important that the, the, the brothers and sisters out there really get that into their into their being, into their soul, and into their conscience. <coughs> You know, there's a there's a lot of I, I, I hear and I see a lot of people, you know, rejoicing in, in, in his return, and as we should. Yeah. But I want I want to bring the attention to Amos 5:18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord of Yahweh. To what end is it for you? There's 144,000 that are going to be sealed. Are you one of them? Am I one of them? Yeah. When you, auto, when you automatically accept and, and believe in your mind that, that um, hey, I'm part of the 144,000, you become at ease. It's, no, it's really no different than the, the mentality behind the rapture. You need to make sure what end is it for you. What end is it for, for Brother Frank? And, the, and I don't know if this is a healthy fear or an unhealthy fear or, or what this is, but I fear that day. Because I don't want to be ashamed. I do not want to feel shame, and I fear his coming. Not because it's, it's, I, I know that he has paid with his precious blood. He has paid the price for my sin. But it's still a fearful thing. It sh and I believe it should be. According
according to the book. I think it's very important that the saints really get that into their mind. It's a woe, woe unto you. Woe unto you that desire that day. And, Pastor, I just want to say one other thing. Brother Ron brought it to my attention when he was talking. And you mentioned it, uh, Jeremiah 3.15. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. And for the new brothers and the new sisters that call in, that, that, that verse does not say, and I will give you brothers according to my heart. So when you call up Pastor Dell, please address him with the title and with the position that he has been anointed with. He is feeding us, and he's feeding you. I know we, well, we live in a society where we've been Hellenized, and we don't, we don't um, esteem men. And those men, in uh, according to the flesh, that have positions of authority or rule over, you will address them as senator or Mr. President or officer or boss or whatever. There is a man that has been ordained from the Most High, that has changed a lot of our lives by his obedience. So please, my brothers and sisters, respect him enough to use the title that is in the book. His name is Pastor Charles Dow. And Pastor, I don't mean to, to, to step on your step on your ground, but that 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 kind of irritates me. And I know Sister Carrie's called in about it before. And other brothers have called in before. And I just want to reiterate that to the to the to the new people coming in. He is Pastor Dow. He is our pastor. We are the sheep, and he is our shepherd. Please, please show him the respect. That is all. That's all I got, Pastor. I love you. I love Straightway. I love the saints in California and New Jersey and Texas, here in Georgia and Florida. I love you all. And I cannot wait to see all of you again. Hallelujah. Thank you for your sound words, Brother Frank. You know, I, um, what can you say behind that but truth? I mean, he's really trying to bring it on mind with us. I mean, I want to see the most high coming just like anybody else. But, man, it is a day of darkness. It's a day of gloominess. It's a day of dread. Ooh, I think, morning, Brother Frank, thank you for... Um, Helping bring everything back around full circle and to put a soberness in our mind the way it should be. We had better sincerely, everybody individually, better be working on ourselves. I promise you that. Let's go to da 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 da, -da. We did Brother Ron. Da -da -da. Brother Snow! 314, Brother Snow. How you doing, Brother Snow? You up next. What you got, brother? Hey! Hello, Pastor. I'm doing well right now. Uh, I, just, I won't be long before you. I just wanted to also thank you for being a true shepherd of the Most High God. You're welcome. Yes, sir. I, I mean, I was actually thinking while Brother Frank was talking, it's because of pastors like you that we're able to go, continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I just wanted to thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes, sir, and uh, bless you and bless all the saints and straight way and well. Shalom, my brother. Shalom, shalom, shalom. That's Brother Snow. Let's go to da, 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 da. Brother Jesus. 703, Brother Jesus. How you doing, Brother Jesus? Shalom, shalom, Pastor Dow. Shalom. Pastor. Yes, sir. I'm doing, I'm blessed to the most high Yah. How you doing, Brother Jesus? Hallelujah. Uh, I'm blessed to the most high Yah. I'm blessed to the most high Yah. How you doing, Brother Jesus? Hallelujah. I'm blessed to the most high Yah. How you doing, Brother Jesus? You know, hearing, uh, hearing, you know, these, uh, these phone calls, I tell you what, they're pretty good. Um, especially what Brother Frank uh, just mentioned, uh, you know, respecting you as, as a pastor and just, uh, just uh, getting our heart right for that, for that uh, coming of the day of the Lord. Uh, we found worship, Brother Frank, but other than that, Pastor, I really don't have much for you except that, you know, um, you know, uh, thank you for all that you do, and uh, I look forward to going down and seeing y'all down there straightway. Hallelujah. It's always good seeing you, Brother Jesus. Always good seeing you. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, shalom. 
Let's go to uh, Brother Ami in New York. Brother Ami in New York just passed it out. 347. How you doing, my brother? How you doing, Brother Ami? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. How you doing, man? I'm all right. What you got? I just want to say, Pastor, that uh, that jealousy, that, that uh, service is hitting me. Pastor, all those, sir, all those, every single service, I mean, everyone hit, is hitting hit me. That's what is hitting me, Pastor. You know, the, you remember uh, Yah's one? Remember? Yep. That service, brother? You remember you did that? Yeah. Guys one? Yeah. When you talked about, uh, um, that you said, oh, man, I don't remember. Damn, that, uh, Pastor, help me out. When you were talking about Jesus, when, oh, no, no, when you said that, uh, only one breath from it. When what? That you only one breath from it. One breath. That's it? Just one? That's it, that's one breath. That's scary, Pastor. One breath, and that's it. Thanks. That is it. We just one breath, and we could be gone. That's true. That is true, brother. Pastor, I want to tell you that I keep, keep get. I want to thank you for the, you know, the wisdom, you know, for the fear and understanding, and for. I want you to get more personal. You know how you get personal? You get in the mindset of people, you get personal, you get personal to keep go harder. Well, hallelujah. Well, bless you, brother. But, um, shalom, my brother. Stay, hallelujah. Stay Sh out there. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Bless you, brother. Let's go to Sister Janae. Uh, there in Tennessee, 931, 931. How you doing, Sister Janae? Bro, this is Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, how you doing, brother? I'm good, Pastor. How are you? All right, all right, all right. What's it been like down there in your neck of the woods? Uh, it's, been, it's been a lot of birds in the sky lately. You get any of them? Nah, uh, we talking about helicopters. Uh-oh. What are you seeing, Chinooks, Blackhawks? Now it looks more like a civilian helicopter, but it had kind of like a boom sprayer. On the front of it. Oh, really? And he was flying. He was flying real low, and me and my father was down by the creek today doing some target shooting. Yeah. Like to keep up on our A game. But uh, you know that that, that kind of that kind of worried me a little bit because usually we don't see a whole lot of helicopters around here except for certain times of the year. It's always this time of year when crops are coming in. Right, right, right. And, uh, you think they were spraying for mosquitoes? I, you know, well, that's what they say they stand for. But you know, recently in Florida, where all the bees uh, have been dying off, I know you heard about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, shortly after that, then we did see a couple of uh, dark green military helicopters. My 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 my. And you know, we live we live off in the middle of nowhere for for the most part. We're twenty thirty minutes away from everything. Right. Right. And uh, ain't no store. For down here like that, so it's a real small town, very small community. But uh, that right there, you know, it just made me want to say one thing that you know we we've been working on our greenhouse. We ain't put no pictures up of it yet. We just now getting started and everything. But that that was what I was wanting to call talk about is that you know trying to warn people that they need to get their their food covered and you know keep it covered like y'all do for say in the greenhouse because a lot of things. Like you was uh, talking about the chemtrails, how they fall down, and you just spontaneously find a spider web somewhere that shouldn't even be one. True. So, you know, I would just call and say that and say shalom and give you uh, all kinds of blessings, Pastor, and let you know that we're praying for you and everybody else straight away, and we're going to try to make it back as soon as we can. All right. We'll be looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, and Sister Janae says hi. And just the latest as well. Hallelujah. All right, my brother's good to hear from you. Ain't gonna hold on no longer. Y'all take care. Shalom. All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. All right, let's go to Brother Steve there in Canada. Brother Steve. How you doing, Brother Steve? Shalom, my pastor. Shalom, shalom, shalom. How you doing, my brother? Oh, we're 
we're doing we're doing quite fine. We <clears throat> we had uh, huge internet issues yesterday. We could not get one beat of the teaching yesterday, but uh, we're going to be uh, watching right after this uh, tonight's event. And uh, so we hadn't had a chance until we just landed or peaked this uh, next look. But the last hour, <laughs> I'll go. Wow, you get a chance to look at it, my brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but during today, we have uh, we were just doing quite a bit of traveling around here and met up with some, uh, you know, some potential people, potential saints. And uh, um, so we did a lot of readings as we're in the car. And we're reading. I just want to share something with you and ask something uh, uh, what your thought was. Was on second... Ezra's, and now this is the part where um, Ezra is asking Yah, he has these dreams, and he's talking about the, the, the eagle with the, the triple head and, and all the, the, um, the wings, and he's having all these, these, these dreams, and he's asking for interpretation. And I'm looking at second Ezra's from 31 to 34. But 33 to 34 is really what I'm looking at, and, and he's talking about like asking for some interpretation for uh, the, the stream. And Yah is responding, and he says this. It starts in 31. It says, And as for the lion, whom you saw rousing up out of the forest and roaring and speaking to the eagle and reproving him for his unrighteousness, and as for all this, all his words that you have heard, this is the Messiah whom the Most High has kept until the end of days, who will arise from the posterity of David and will come and speak to them. He will denounce them for their ungodliness and for their wickedness, and, will, and I will cast up before them their contemptuous dealings. Now, this is where my, I just want to get your, 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 and, and what he's coming up with. And this is after, actually, um, uh, Brother um, brother Frank was talking earlier about fearing, and this is what I just would add some, some input or, you know, anyways. And it says here, For first he will set them living before his judgment seat, and when he has reproved them, then he will destroy them. But he will deliver in mercy the remnant of my people, those who have been saved throughout my borders, and he will make them joyful until the end comes, the day of judgment of which I spoke to you at the beginning. And this is the dream that you saw, and this is a, its interpretation. So, Pastor Ed. Brother, it, to me, it just sounds like end-time prophecy. Everything that's going to be taking place, everything, all the stuff we talk about over and over, and over again, uh, that's all it sounds like. It, it, it just sound, it's, it's really that simple. It sounds like end-time prophecy about the things that are going to take place. They ain't going to even really even look into that, brother. It's just going to happen the way that it's just said. Yeah, sir. And that's what I was saying earlier about what I really was, was grasping on to this was that he says here, and he will make them joyful until the end comes. And that, 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 that really plucks at my heart because, you know, you fear him, and this is a, 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 the love there, too. So you have the joy. So he's going to give you, he's going to make us joyful. Yeah, that's true, brother. That is so true. And boy, did I ever put a smile on our faces? And we, we were just—I have—I underlined it. I, I pulled out the, the <laughs> you know, it's just—it's really one of those that just pops right out at you, and it's something that was really needed. <laughs> brother, I, I can't add to it, brother Steve. I mean, it's—it's it's pretty, you know, as much as we talk about end time problems, it's pretty self-explanatory. Sure is, fair pastor. Yes, yes, it is. Why well, we wanted to call in and and uh, buy you uh, shalom and uh, let you know that we're we're uh, you know fighting a good fight over here, of course. And I, I put our number. We have a new number, and I, I put in your your private uh, message there. 
So, uh, and also, we'll have to, um, you were mentioning earlier about uh, having it downloadable so um, Saints can put their information, uh, download the, like a, a document, a PDF, and then they can, uh, you know, mail it off to you. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. I would appreciate it greatly. It is. I'll, um, I'll send it to you. I'll, I'm almost done working on it. And I'll send it to you by email, okay? Okay. Beautiful, Pastor. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, Sister Wenda. Bless you. Bless you. Love you. Love you, Sister Carol. She can hear you. Shalom, Pastor. Shalom, shalom. All right, all right. It's always good. That was a real good connection there with Brother Steve, wasn't it? Ooh, boy. You know, a lot of y'all probably wonder why I look down and then I look up and then I look down and I look up because we got a screen that I monitored from. Maybe I ought to hook it up on this one over here. I don't know if that was hooked up to the internet or not. That one would be fine, though. But, you know, sometimes we have to do that. So when I'm listening to folks and stuff, you know, I want to make sure my neck ain't hurting and stuff because, you know, uh, I, anyway, many of you people already know. You already know. Um, I'll tell you one thing, though. There's much to be desired in the time that we're living in right now. Um, and I, I'm not going to be the one to tell you to, and pretend that I have all the answers for everything because I, I literally just don't have all the answers for everything. I just, I really, truly don't have all the answers. But what I do have answers to, I answer. Um, and as I hear, I answer. I listen to what people say. I know I have the Ruach. So I listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to me. Then I give you the answer according to what he gives me. Because this wisdom right here, it comes from above. It don't come from man. And I got I ask for wisdom all the time. I ask the Father for wisdom. That's one thing that Solomon asked. He asked for wisdom so he could be wise to be able to rule the people. And he was ruling. He was a king. I ain't trying to be no king. I'm just a little old pastor now. That's about it. That's all I am. Um, I'm trying to do like everybody else. Uh, try to make it to the kingdom. That's all I'm trying to do. Well, hallelujah. We done had enough field for tonight. What time is it now? I think we done been long enough. Let me see if I can pull this time up good. We ended a little bit early. Pastor Dow is going to bed. I am going to bed. Hallelujah. But I bless each and every last one of you. Sweet, precious, and strong, and victorious, and mighty overcoming name of our soon coming King Yahshua Hamashiach. I hope that y'all encourage uh, the King is coming. Shalom. Look at him looking.